All right, hello everyone. This is the final video for um, lesson three, module three, um, where we are writing the equations of um, quadratic um, functions and solving them too. Or solving quadratic equations, I should say, from word problems. So, okay. Karen wants to plant a garden and put decorative stones around it. She has enough stones to enclose a rectangular garden with a perimeter of 68 feet, and she wants the garden to cover 240 square feet, 240 square feet. What is the length and width of her garden? Okay, so let's draw a little picture here. Okay, rectangular garden. Um, we'll say this is the width, this is the length. This would be also the width and the length here too. The area is 240 square feet. So that would be area equals length times width, or in other words, 240 equals length times the width. The perimeter Perimeter is you add up all the sides, so the L plus W plus plus W, there you go, plus L plus W. In other words, 2L plus 2W. Okay, we know what the perimeter is though, the perimeter is 68. So let's go ahead and solve this for one of our variables, and we can plug it in over here. Okay, let's solve for L. Okay. Doesn't really matter here because we're asked for the length and the width, so we're going to have to do both anyway. Okay, so I'll subtract 2w on both sides. We get 68 minus 2w equals 2l. Divide both sides by 2. So we'll get l equals um, 34 minus w. Plug that 34 minus w in for l right there. and distribute and then subtract 240 from both sides. So we get negative w squared plus 34w minus 240. Divide everything by negative 1 so we can get, I like this negative w squared there so I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. So we get 0 equals w squared minus 34w plus 240. Now we'll factor. Now the nice thing is we have a lead coefficient of 1 here. So you can just factor, we can just look for the numbers that multiply to 240 and add to make negative 34. And the answer is um, negative 24 and negative 10. And so we get w equals 24 and w equals 10. Okay, so two different answers here, and they both make sense in the context. They're both okay in the context here. How can we figure out what um, L is? Well, we're going to use this right here, the 240 equals L times W. I'm going to go off the worksheet here. So 240, if um, W is 24, well, we'll divide both sides by 24. So L would be 10. So 24 and 10 go together. If W is 10, divide both sides by 10, L is 24. And so those two go together as well. Okay, so either the width is 24 and the length is 10, or the width is 10 and the length is 24. All right, next, six. Find two consecutive odd integers whose product is 99, okay? Note there are two different pairs of consecutive odd integers and only one, only one algebraic solution will be accepted. Okay, so consecutive odd integers. So um, an odd integer is just an even, is one more than an even integer. So to guarantee we have an even number, you can do something like two times x. This will always be even because it's always gonna be twice whatever number you have. If x was even, well twice an even number is still even. If x is odd, twice, a number, twice an odd number will still be even. To make it odd then, we'll just add a one on and boom, now we have an odd integer. So if that's one of our odd integers, consecutive means how can we find the next one? Well. How do you find the next odd integer? If you have an odd number, how do you find the next one in line? Well, if we add one to this number, it'll now be even. If we add two to it, so it's two x plus three, now it is going to be odd again, the next odd number. And their product, so we're gonna multiply them there, their product is 99. So now we just multiply. 
again, it's quadratic, so we get 4x squared, let's see, so 2x times 2x, we get 6x plus 2x, so 8x, and then 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, subtract 99 on both sides. Okay, yeah, because again, minus 99, minus 99. Okay, um, let's see. Hopefully 96 we can divide out of 4 here, and we can. So we can factor out a GCF of 4. And since we have our lead coefficient inside here is 1, we can just find two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to make 2. What are those two numbers going to be? x plus 6 and x minus 4. And so we end up with x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. Again, you could set that 4 equal to 0, but 4 never equals 0. So we wouldn't get any solutions there from that 4. That's out front here. But we can with this x plus 6 and x minus 4. Subtract 6 on both sides. Add 4 on both sides. We get x equals negative 6 and x equals positive 4. Do both of these answers make sense in the context? Um, yes, but, well, both of these solve it, but negative 6 doesn't really make sense because you wouldn't really talk about, um, well, sorry, I guess we're not quite done yet, are we? Um, to find the actual odd integer, we're going to plug that x back in here. So I plug negative 6 in for that. We get negative 12 plus 1, which is negative 11. But typically we don't talk about negative numbers being even or odd. At least I don't think we do. So we wouldn't really use this one. But the 4, when we plug that in, we get 8 plus 1, which is 9. And then the other number, the next odd integer will be 11. So 9 and 11 are our two answers. <clears throat> They're consecutive, and they multiply to make 99. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get into the challenge here as well and do that. Um, so yeah, let's, let's read through it here. You have a 500 roll foot roll of chain link fencing and a large field, you want to fence in a rectangular playground area. What are the dimensions of the largest such playground area you can enclose? What is the area of the playground? <clears throat> okay. So, um, let's see here. We're going to have a rectangular playground. You'll have W, oh no, sorry, width, width, and length, and that's going to be for the perimeter. Then this 500 foot roll, that's the perimeter. That's limiting our, you know, our um, how big we can make our fence by that number of by the amount of um, fencing that we've got. So in other words, it's really 500 equals 2w times 2l. Oh, sorry, 2w plus 2l. Okay. The area. It's just going to be length times width. So again, we'll solve for one of these variables here. Let's just solve for um, w. <clears throat> so subtract 2l from both sides. 500 minus 2l equals 2w. So divide both sides by 2. So you get w equals 250 minus l. Put that in for this w right here. And the area we want to maximize So it'll be L times 250 minus L. Okay. Um, now, we can distribute here. Oops, I forgot the L. The problem is, we don't know what the area is supposed to be. We just want to maximize the area. Okay. Well, the graph of this thing is going to be a parabola. You know, it looks something like this upside down, and we want to find this highest point, all right, which we haven't really gotten into in a lesson, but that occurs at the vertex, okay, and the vertex we can find in situations like this using negative b over 2a, okay, in this case our b is 250 and our a is negative 1, which is just going to be 250 degrees, or 250, okay, Oops, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to multiply here. It's 2 times negative 1, so it'll be negative 2, which is 125. Okay, so that's going to be where our vertex is. We're going to call that our length. 
okay? And then if our length is 125, our width will just be 250 minus L, which is 125 as well, okay? Don't fret too much about that though. Um, we haven't really talked about vertex yet, but that is where you locate um, the maximum of a problem. All right, thanks for sticking around for this, guys. Um, if you have questions, again, we'll cover the vertex stuff in a, a later section.